So yeah, I thought it'd be kind of cool to just promote some local uh, interview shows. Uh, I'm just bored at home and uh, I have nothing prepared right now. Hey, so yeah, bored at home. Uh, I'm gonna watch the most popular uh, videos on uh, some local interview shows that um, I watch a lot and yeah, it's a bunch of uh, YouTube channels that you should be definitely checking out. Yeah, so this first one's from Tucson. They're called Wait What Media Group. Um, they're great. I really love what they do. They do a lot of game stuff. Uh, this most popular video was called Nightmare. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, what we got here. All right, so it's like a, like a horror thing that they did. This looks kind of scary. I like the cinematography. This looks pretty sweet right now. Sleeping, nice beer, bro. Oh. Creepy. It's a lot of build up. There's like this lower, uh, like humming in the background. You can hear it, makes it kind of creepy. Okay, okay, what are we doing here? Is this what the ghost sees or? Yeah, this is. Something's gonna happen right here, I feel it. It's a lot of buildups. Here we go. My heart's pumping. Is that, is that help me? <laughs> what? Alright, it's getting creepy. It's getting creepy. A lot of build up. You heard help me. The door opened up. He's gonna go check it out, of course. I wouldn't. No, I probably would. I love the camera work. Seriously, it's great because you don't see what he's seeing at first. It makes it way creepier. Oh, that, that, literally, that, that really legitimately scared me right there. That, that was a good jump. And there was no noise to back it up, so that's just all pure the door. That was great. What the fuck? <laughs> what? What was that? Damn, they did really good with this. This is creepy as shit. Can you help me? What? I don't know, what was there before? Or was that up there? I don't know, I kind of missed that part. Shit. Whoa, what the fuck? That was great! That was so good! <laughs> Damn, that was really good. They edited that really, really well. <laughs> Whoa!
That was good. That was super. Oh, that last one right there at the end. That was great because I felt comfortable there at the end, and I was like, "No, nah, it's gonna be fine." Really, really good. All right, cool. <laughs> Damn, that was awesome. Uh, all right, next we have a topless robot. Uh, topless robot's another good one. Um, they do a lot of like game stuff too. Uh, nerdy reviews, you know. I mean that in the best love. I, I even was stopped by there once. Uh, it was great. Those are really cool guys. They have a video with three point two million views. And it's Atlantic Rim trailer. So let's see what's going on with this. I've never seen anything like this before. We don't believe the rig disappeared. Like a movie preview? We believe it was scuttled. What do you propose? He was the first one to sign up, and he passed all the tests. Is this a real movie? Glad y'all can make it. Wouldn't miss it for the world. Are these MBOD pilots ready? Gearing up as we speak. Oh, what? This is an Eclipse dive. Commencing launch sequences. Leg off. Oh, yeah, this is like Pacific Rim, I'm guessing, right? Yeah. Bots are down. I'm picking something up on the sonar. I'm not what sure yet if this is real. It's very. Or very sad Harry, is what I'm trying to say. Red. Sanitary, sanitary. That thing just touched down south of New York. Broke it into what? Is this he is a like reckless a sci fi movie? Building. But he's the best we've got. Come on! Get the hell out of here. Ah! Ah! Atlantic Rim. Uh, yeah, that's not really what Topless Robot's about. Why was that on their channel? I'm kind of confused. Alright, well, next we have up um, Desert Detonation. Desert Detonation is another good one. They're kind of recent. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, let's check out their most popular video. It's an interview with Brian Mogul, really great uh, guitarist here in, in the Arizona music scene. Babbitt Stark Productions! Whoa! Yeah, bass? Damn! Oh! Yeah, okay, nice guitar! Yeah! Yeah, I know that guy, Christopher Mon Montana. Yeah, he's great. Oh, that's it. It's a great intro. I like it, I like it. Put some work into this. That's Band Oasis, by the way. They shoot this at Band Oasis. Hi, this is Jim Stark. And Terry Babix. And this is Desert Detonation. <laughs> I wonder how many times it took him to do that. With us today is Mr. Brian Mogul. Brian, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing awesome. I'm doing great. Well, thanks for being here, Brian. Um, everyone's curious, like, what planet you come from and all that stuff, because we're convinced you're an alien, but... So how you, <laughs> Jim Stark is great. He's, uh, uh he I knows was, how to, uh, uh bring entertainment. I in high school. I went on to join the Marine Corps, and I played clarinet in the Marine Corps band. And, uh, while in the Marine Corps, I got turned on to heavy metal. I think it was Deep Purple back then. Nice. And, uh, uh, I nice. just... Richie Blackmore... Uh, <laughs> Brian is great, though. He, he's an awesome band guy. He's accomplished he so much. It's awesome. He still shreds. Clarinet. I always played other instruments too, but uh, mainly clarinet. And um, uh, then I started, I had a w weird idea I was going to do, you know, like the, uh, that kind of music on clarinet. And actually, we did a little bit. That's nice. Yeah. It didn't happen for very long. I was out of there in four years. <laughs> uh, who are some of your major influences? Oh, got to put that mic uh, a little closer. Well, uh, I, on guitar. You're, uh, I, I think of myself as a composer too, and there's influences there, but. I would say on guitar, Yuli John Roth, Michael Shanker, uh, for sure those two. Jimmy Page, uh, I wouldn't think he's the musicianship of those other two, but he certainly has more to say on his guitar than anybody else. Uh, he's just so perfectly phrasing, you know, he, the emotion that comes out of his melodies. Uh, I said Jeff Beck, um, and 
Um, there's probably there's probably half a dozen others that. Oh, I'm sorry. oh, there we go. <laughs> there you caught it. <laughs> um, what were some of your influences there? Because your music is, is just really amazing. You have uh, really awesome stuff in there. You have a wide variety of stuff. Well, I was afraid you were going to ask this because the answer is not as cool as the other one, right? Um, like Rogers and Hammerstein and <laughs> stuff like this. Because I was in the band, I had to learn uh, things for formal uh, events. It's kind of cool. I, I always love this stuff, you know, just like, numbers and stuff like I mean, but, um, he's been around. So Brian has done a lot, and it's great to uh, learn from experienced just musicians. Kind of a melody that was good. And then the whole era I was growing up with, like uh, TV shows, they had counter melodies. So they're, you know, All right. Uh, next up, we have uh, Arizona Breakdown. I love Arizona Breakdown. I'm a metal guy myself. So let's check this out. Andre, the host, I bought my uh, my guys, guitar uh, from him. He's a great guy. This is the first episode. It's his most viewed one. That's cool. Logo. Yeah, Andre does a lot of uh, interviews with bands. Um, he has it really dialed in these days. Uh, this is, I mean, obviously this is his first episode. I'm not sure if he's going to have a guest on this. Maybe he's just pu pumping up bands, which is great. This is cool how he sets this up, you know, he kind of pumps up the band and then shows a little clip of them real quick, ties it in. And like I said, he nowadays he has it really locked in, he has people come over, he has really nice mic set up, multiple camera angles, so... Andre's a great guy. This is an older episode. This has to be a few years back, I would imagine, or at least a couple. Three years ago. All these bands have come up in those years. I wonder if uh, uh, Andre has a really great band, Dead World Reclamation. I'm not sure if they were around at this point. Three years ago, they had to have been. I feel like they just started, maybe. <laughs> All right. So uh, next up, we have uh, Jacob on Terrainer. I really hope I didn't like say that last name, but bad man. I'm sorry. Unterainer. That's my last attempt. But Jacob, you're great, and I love watching your show too. Uh, this is the most uh, viewed episode on his YouTube channel, and it's called On the Note, Episode 11 with Bent Knee. Nice little intro. Oh, and, yeah, I see. It's an, it's an A. Uh, yeah, the knee. All right, so this is <laughs> the cool. 11th episode of On That Note. <laughs> Um, he has a, Jacob has a great personality. Courtney Swain and Ben Levin from Bent Knee. They are just fresh off the stage over at the Crescent Ballroom. <laughs> they are on tour. 
Um, and pineapples. I wonder if they're using that mic on the table. <laughs> I, I would assume so. That's why it hasn't been shot. I'm here to talk to them about their amazing um, musicianship. Um, so, where I would like to start is um, on the album that you guys put out, Land Animal. It's very look at clear that beard. That you guys put a lot of detail into Jacob, tone. good job. I mean, the other guy tone, too, but look at how nice that is. Um, and I was curious, did you guys, during the course of your musical education, oh, I just noticed a shirt. Playboy Man Baby, got good instruction about tone and how to create different tones to have different effects? Well, mostly no. Mm-hmm. Um, I got... I got one really good tip about tone. One person said what makes a professional guitarist is tone and time. Mm-hmm. So it's basically that tone matters. <laughs> I had the same reaction as the, the be too lady. bashful about being loud. <laughs> and I think I failed mostly at, at both of those for the longest time. I mean, even maybe even still with the volume thing. Um, but I had a Boss GT8 pedal with uh, an Ibanez gem and uh, I have that same Boss GT8 pedal. Well, still it is the glorious. The majority of the time I've been playing, and the two just didn't work together because the gem by itself didn't really sound good, clean, just straight in. It just didn't, didn't. It needed effects, and then the effects I was using, it was like I didn't know what I didn't know, and uh, they just, they were like good for what they were, but they weren't like what I have now, which is, I mean, the main difference between what I have now and what I had then is now from mixing albums and stuff I know like where the get what the guitar could be that it wasn't um and yeah I didn't I didn't <laughs> you see I how musicians are <laughs> did a bad job. he's a great guy he's full of things but it's, come on man sit up talk yeah, <laughs> talk a little bit louder and clear I think I'm good now I'm good now I get compliments from sound people that's how you know it's legit yeah uh, what about you vocally Courtney yeah very very little yeah I don't think I I actually spend a lot of time teaching that myself now, mm-hmm. um, because I think... Um, I love that scarf. Yeah, I think it's it's a really <laughs> interesting part of the voice to experiment, and uh, I think it's a good thing to start early before you sort of, like, get comfortable with, like, a certain thing. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's also a really good way to... A, a good way to sort of put away the sensitivity and the vulnerability that you encounter a lot with singing mm-hmm. where you're sort of like uh, where you're forced to treat it more like an instrument than um, than you and how you convey yourself um, yeah yeah that makes a lot of sense why do you guys think that it's not something that's covered in curriculums because it's obviously very important and has a huge impact on the like See, this is interesting i love this stuff i can literally just sit here and watch this all night why do you think um, it's left out this is great for guitar it's very ephemeral um Ooh. you can take a chalkboard a really great word to describe that theory. too so you can have a group of people silently with pens learn theory pretty well um and then with the right assignment apply it and and integrate it into their music. I mean, I, I think you can. All right, guys, next up we have Soundphoria. This is the most viewed uh, video on their page. It is an interview with Sarah. I'm pretty positive it's Sarah. I'm sure we'll hear it here in a moment. One more time. Yeah, yeah go to the interview. What's up, uh, everybody? <laughs> Jeff here, South Fourier Radio, South Fourier Media Entertainment with the guys from Sarah. Sarah, okay, guys? cool. Yeah, oh, yeah, they're really young guys. All, all of our listeners. All right, I'm Jackson. I kind of forget. Summer. I kind of forgot I'm that they're uh, younger Jackson guys. I'm Cole. That's Look at these I'm guys. They got it down. Right on. He right put on the makeup for the South interview. Guys. I'm not hating yeah. on that. That's uh, great. You guys <laughs> just played a show. Uh, Practicing in a little room that's in my house where we cram everything in together. We have a two, there are two amps on crammed on the two sides of the walls, and it's pointing right towards me. And my drum set takes up the most room. I actually broke our PA system trying to walk over. <laughs> that, was, that, was a, that was a great day. I was yeah. trying to get. Back These to guys my have a really a solid look. Uh, they got a good logo. They seem about it. You know, the drummer's wearing his drummer shirt. You can tell that guy's the guitarist. 
middle of a lawsuit right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm my drummer right yeah. now. <laughs> I like this. You know, they have the two cameras just kind of set up, point at each other. This is an early one. South Korea does do a lot. They do. They broadcast a lot of shows. Yeah, you guys are fairly new on the scene, so uh, yeah, yeah. kind of, you know, somebody take over here and kind of give us uh, the the story of Zara. So, well, I mean, I'll, I'll pass that towards to you, Amigo. All right. Well, like, so let's hear it. Me and this dude went to high school together, so we were in like a previous band, and we were just doing like local shows and stuff with some of like the. Uh, I don't know what you call them, like the, uh, the foundations that help kids get all the shows, you know. We were doing nice. some of those things. That's cool. But it was yeah, like yeah. the same crowd and everything, so. And then we were just trying to come up with, like, something, like, next level. And we started um, just trying to record, because obviously going in a real studio is too much. And we couldn't, like, dial in the sound, because we, we were timed, you know. And so... We, he started getting recording gear, and we started from there, and we were trying to get everything copyrighted before, and like, you know, do it the right way, and so, and it took us like two years to finish the, the demo CD. So you guys did everything yourselves? Yeah. Yeah, yep. And uh, I think that, that's, uh, you know, I, I think that's, uh, that's the natural, I mean, you know, from the inception of a band mm -hmm. to wanting yeah. to record, and it's always like, man, the recording process is so expensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I think a lot more bands are looking at it like, we could do this ourselves. And, yeah. and I, I, I think that's become the mindset of a lot of bands to try to be as efficient, self-efficient as you can be. Mm -hmm. right, yeah. Cut out the middleman, mm -hmm. you know? And, uh, and you know, at, at this day and age, you can't just be the guitar player, the bass player, or just the drummer. You gotta yeah. have mm -hmm. other hats to wear, so. Right. Yeah. Uh, Nice hey man, you guys are doing that. You guys are that was some uh, that was some knowledge he just dropped right there. Yeah, yeah. It's refreshing to see that definitely metal will be saved. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> it was it was nerve wracking though because we did. The there's a good there's a good metal scene. I don't know when this was, but so when we first practiced with him, it was like, I couldn't do it, you know, because like I had done like the thing. All right, cool. Next up, we have getting stoked. I love getting stoked with Matthew Slesser. Uh, he's a great guy. Um, and this is the most popular video. Uh, it is with Holy Fun. It looks like it's just uh, them jamming, but I do like the Holy Fun jamming away. Look at the, um, this looks kind of older. Nice poochy pooch. Nah. Hi. Hi. That's Daisy. Hi, Daisy. Oh, you're so Aww. soft. I smell my puppers, huh? Uh, yeah, that'd be great, dude. Hell yeah, get that water in. Stay hydrated, folks. Holy Fun, jamity to jam. Holy Fun's doing big things now. They're moving along, man. This must be older. I actually did a cover of this song. No joke. I did it with an H string. See, this is the great thing about a lot of these interview shows. Every once in a while, you have these performance videos that you're. Uh, of your locals, and it's great. I didn't know he played this on a, I guess they do probably do some heavier things with their pedals, but I don't know, I thought he had a seven string. My cat's being annoying as shit right now. this is the whole banner it's just I'm guessing it's just him obviously because that's all we've seen so far I mean the song has a really long build-up 
So it could be possible they're waiting to jump in. I bet I know there was drums by this point in the song, so probably not. That's like a really heavy distorted part. That's kind of cool to get this version of it. All right, cool. All right, guys. Next up, we have Crunch Time. Crunch Time's a really cool one. They do a lot of uh, obviously interviews because this is all about interviews. But they do like performance videos on the roof. That's what we're about to check out. But um, they also do like uh, um, the hot eating wings thing. You know that I forget what the real one's called. Uh, but theirs is called Dry Heat. But it's great. They have local guests come on and they eat um, hot chicken wings. It's awesome. I, please invite me. That looks amazing. <laughs> but uh, let's check this out. This is the most popular video. And I'm happy it's one of the rooftop performances. This is a really great idea. Huh? They must okay. just have really cool neighbors. I'm, girl. I'm still on the roof. First song is Love Song to My Bed. And it's called Bed. I don't know where they do this, but this is great. It must be in Tempe, like, probably close to ASU, I would imagine, because I don't know how they're getting away with this. This is great. My neighbors would be uh, super annoyed. Even though this is beautiful music, obviously. I don't know. I don't, hopefully not. This is great. See, isn't that nice with the background and shit? This is so cool. Really nice guitar. Is she looping? She's looping! Yes! I like it. It's like, it just like tucks under those notes, it's great. She was looping the vocals too. This is sweet. This is really hard to do. Um, live loops are really difficult to master because if you get off a hair, it's it's the most embarrassing thing. Ooh, listen to that. That sounds sweet. Yeah, this is cool, man. See, I get into stuff like this. This is like bike riding music. And the background's perfect for this. No wonder this has the most views. This is great.
but yeah thanks for watching guys um make sure you check out all those channels i'm going to leave a bunch of links in the, the description of the video but um yeah there's a lot of hard-working people here not just the musicians but the people interviewing the musicians and uh, we should all be kind of helping each other and paying attention there's a lot of people uh creating some quality content here in the in the arizona scene and it's a melting pot it's a really cool place i just noticed this little sorry <laughs> but um yeah uh hope you enjoyed make sure you check out those links